What a perfect, uh, what a perfect morning, né? And uh, I, I don't know if all the team feels that way. I think we all do. That you know, we are so fortunate to uh, to work in a place where we can be in this in this exchange of of giving and receiving, and um, in this place of awe, of seeing the soul of you know in of you, the students, uh, and, you know, and I am lucky to be able to go to Honduras and get to experience that there, you know, like I get to experience to work from my heart and to receive the, the, the gratefulness of, from the hearts of everybody that we touch there. So, and one day, Hopefully, all of you will come and experience it with me because that's the most wonderful thing: is to 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 share this, and to share this with others. Um, well, it was a fabulous mission with the last two months, and then all of this year, really. And uh, you'll see many familiar faces because some of your team members came uh, and worked in Honduras uh, on a mission, and. Um, you know, so we had missions w with Kate when she came in the spring. Um, all our all our different dispensaries. We now have seven of them got visited by uh, Canadian homeopaths, and uh, all of them were Mish graduates. You know, very very nice. This photo I particularly like because uh, we're here in in uh, Kane. And uh, we're really working in an integrated way. The woman in blue there, so actually the only day she was in blue, she was trying to match up with our color. She was wearing green every other day. Um, she is the, the doctor there of that center, and uh, she took on homeopathy right away the first time that she took the, the training. Uh, in April was when we first came to that uh, town. And she's been seeing patients just with homeopathy two days a week, and the other three days she does medicine. But what, what was happening with the team here is that we each went off, we saw patients on our own, and then we would get together and, and uh, dialogue the patients and do the prescriptions together. It was really a fabulous experience. So just... Uh, uh, again, a reminder of where we are in Honduras and what it looks like. So you can see on, on this map, I've put the names of the different communities that we have our dispensaries. And um, although Honduras is a small country, it's very mountainous. It's an amazingly beautiful country, um, but very difficult to travel in. And so um, when you see how Omoa is all the way on the top there, it takes us a whole day to get there. And so you can just imagine we don't do that just for a few days. And so the mission that goes to that area just uh, only goes there and then they can land at an airport closer by. They don't have to travel so much. But the ones more than southern, they're closer to the capital, Tegucigalpa, is the red dot on there. And, uh, and they are within a couple of hours of drive from Tegucigalpa. And so we do one week per community is usually um, how we, how we uh, set it up. And of course, for us, a really important part is the getting together with the patients and uh, the consultations and the hearing the stories and knowing what an impact we're making on their lives and getting that fed back from them as well. Um, because we go back to the same communities, we see same people again. You know, not everybody comes back because often they don't have. They're fine, they're good, you know. But uh, maybe there's something else that happened or maybe it didn't go as far as, as they wanted to, whatever we were doing. And so they come back. And we get to hear uh, how they appreciate homeopathy and appreciate the kind of, because we're really trying to do community development using homeopathy and, you know, and setting up more of a network of people working in alternative ways with health and, uh, um, and feeling that they have control over their health, that they can actually you know, do this. Because the first line homeopathy course already treats some of the most important problems that they have there, right? The diarrhea, the coughs, the fevers, all of that is in those 12 remedies, which are really quite easy to teach. It's one day, you know, but still. 
Um, so people bring a kit back to their community far in the mountain and they feel like they, they can do something for those those diseases, including the diarrhea in little kids, is actually one of the leading causes of death for for kids like that. So, so we really do uh, do a great job. Um, Janique is here demonstrating our new tops that we got this fall. <laughs> so we are all up to date with the new HTSF logo, and. Uh, it's you know these these clothing it you know yes we use them because it's you know it's better it's like the the protective layer like we, you know we take them off before we go and eat because you know people are sick that we are working with all day but they're also how they recognize us oh the greens are back in town because you know we walk through the town in the morning to get to the to the dispensary and you know oh okay they're they're there and so it, we only clued in now it took us two and a half years that actually the people who are local and responsible responsible for those dispensaries actually should have those clothing too because then they can put that on on the day that they are going to do their work there. So we're, look, we're looking after that and we're making them. These are all Honduran made and, uh, and so they'll have them when we go back in the spring. Um, so here you, you uh, have a little picture of Dionysia. Um, and uh, Marixa, who is one of the uh, people responsible, and this is in Teo Pacenti. And um, one of the big roles that Dionysia has, of course, is ongoing training of the, uh, of the people um, in the dispensary. She stays in touch with them, too, like calls them up and says, how is it going? They text. WhatsApp is the big thing there, like everybody's on WhatsApp. So they're all talking to each other that way. And um, so the, also, you know, we're very, very, very lucky that we um, were put in contact with Dionysia and her partner, Jorge Mario, the, them as a couple. They do everything, like including, you'll see a few pictures. They did the whole uh, uh, in, in Valle de Angeles, our main clinic. They repainted the whole thing, sewn curtains and everything, uh, you know, from there to trying to get the logistics organized, which is a lot of work. Um, like our transportation especially, and, and then the homeopathic part of it. So it's really, they're really phenomenal. Um, so here's what these dispensaries look like. They're actually, it's, you know, they're not big things, right? We're within, um, we have a total of about uh, 100 remedies, complexes, maybe, maybe a little less, maybe 80, let's say, and uh, about 50 Unitarians. And, you know, and so we can do everything that, that needs to be done there. So it's really quite incredible. Uh, this is Valle de Angeles. For those of you who have been there, it looks completely different. Where the dispenser used to be is now a waiting room. And um, you can see we have a color coding. This is thanks to Norbita um, of the concentrates and then the first level of dilution of the concentrates. And these are all complexes, remember? And so the, the mothers, we call them the concentrates. They are the green. And then the uh, Unitarians are orange. And the daughters are yellow. And so, and it's from those daughters that we make the remedies for the patients. So you can just imagine that a bottle of concentrate, uh, where you first make a daughter, and then you from there you make the remedies for the patients. You use eight drops per bottle every time. So you can make about 800 patient prescription from one 30 ml bottle of a, of a mother. So it's really, you know, this is how far homeopathy goes, right? It's really wonderful. Okay, well, these are three, for me, are, are, are great success stories. We have many of them, of course, but um, uh, the ones with the kids always touch us deeply. And uh, some of you I know have been following us on, on Facebook and you've already seen the story of the baby twins probably. Uh, this was like, you know, <clears throat> the story of, of this fall. These were um, prematurely born twin girls. The mother, who you see here on the right there with Norbita, uh, she gave birth on her own on the mountain um, at seven months. The, the twins survived. Um, they were then hospitalized after that for more than a month and, um, and have been home now. They're two months old, but they still look like they are not just newborn, but they are premature newborns, you know, like they really, they're not doing well. And they came, they had already been diagnosed at the health center 
um, because in this community there actually is, um, I think she, maybe there is a doctor there sometimes. Anyways, they had a paper with them to go to the hospital because they had pneumonia. They were both diagnosed with pneumonia. And uh, the parents didn't have even have money to buy the bus ticket for the hospital, you know. And so we said, well, we'll treat them. Will you come back tomorrow morning? Because I was like, Ugh. Um, and uh, and we'll then we'll see, and we'll figure something out, and we'll get you to the hospital if you really need to. And so um, you were teaching them how to give the drops. We had two different kind of things. One was a unitarian, and one was a complex. And every hour they got a drop of each, alternating. And the next morning they were already so much better. It was unbelievable. In fact, they didn't come to our to us to, for the babies. They came because the dad had dengue and you know, imagine like he has to bring the sick babies to the hospital. They don't have money. They have to figure that out. And he's sick with dengue. So, um, and the mother also was, you know, she had had dengue a month before she was still recuperating. Anyways, so everybody was sick and we treated everybody and they came back and were like, oh, <laughs> are you the same people? Um, it was, this is the picture from before. I didn't put a picture from after, but, um, um, you know, it was it was a remarkable healing, and then we kept in touch with them because an aunt of theirs, they stayed in the town with the aunt. They didn't go back on the mountain, and the aunt had a phone, and so we were able to keep up to date. And within five days, the babies were no longer coughing. This would have never happened with antibiotics and whatever they were going to do in the hospital. They would have, you know, stayed in the hospital two, three weeks probably, and who knows how that would have gone. So. I can't wait to see them again in the spring and see now, you know, because we also did gave them a constitutional for them to to get stronger over the next months. Um, anyway, I, you know, I, I can tell you many, many stories. I know we were all wanting to go to dinner or to lunch, but um, ask me and I'll, I'll tell you, okay? <laughs> many more. This, the other little girl just two seconds on her, she's got a very, uh, very serious parasitic disease that's long-term, Leishmaniasis, as it's called, and the father really is convinced that without homeopathy she wouldn't have survived. So we've been treating her for a year, and this is her a year later, one year follow-up, and she's doing amazing. So many more. Um, so as I said, one of the, the, the great things about uh, the missions is to get together and uh, look at the cases together. We get to work as a, as a group. And, uh, and it's, you know, very rewarding. We hear of every case that we've seen that way. You know, it's really nice. We do have a few challenges. And uh, I didn't take the French out there. Um, and one of them is that we're still waiting to sign with the university, which has been going on for three years. You know, and every time we go to say, yeah, 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 we're ready to sign. <clears throat> and at this time, we knew that they weren't ready to sign because they had been at the student strike for six months. And so the university wasn't even accessible. Uh, the other one is the Association of Mayors that was going to supposed to help us with transportation. And it also completely fell through. Um, but uh, the, the good news is that thanks to Dionysia, who's really politically astute, she told every, that in every community we went to the mayors, we had already the idea we we're going to make individual uh, conventions as well, agreements. And um, so she would just tell them, you're the very last one. All the others have signed already. <laughs> And it worked. <laughs> it worked like a charm. <laughs> so they're like, oh my God. <laughs> so they're basically in that. Uh, <laughs> so in, in the signing, they are agreeing to support um, because, you know, we as the, the Canadians, we come, we bring our own per diems and we pay our cost, you know, we pay our way. But uh, for the organization, it would be very expensive to pay the way of Dionysia and Jorge Mario as well, who need to stay in a hotel and be fed and all of that because, you know, we are traveling. And so, um, so they, that's one of the things that the municipalities uh, fund. They, and then they have now been organizing our transportation. Um, this one in Omoa, he had come as a patient himself, and uh, he also always has his personal television channel and cameraman with him whenever, wherever we go. So <laughs> I always find myself with a camera, uh, 
uh, mic in my face. Um, but he tells here, he's, he's telling the story uh, about his own successful treatment with homeopathy. And so this is what he wants his people to hear, you know, like how great this is. He actually starts off saying, well, you all know that, you know, chemical medicine has side effects. As his first sentence, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so we have great support from those mayors, really fantastic. But we are looking for a solution um, on the transportation, which is now our big conclusion that maybe we need to have our own transportation because often we are in, um, you know, in too small stuff and, you know, it's kind of dangerous because, you know, you break and or you get into an accident and how do you get out of a van that is, you're just packed on all sides, you know. And uh, because we do, it's not just our clothes because that's really the small part, but we do bring a whole lot of stuff like uh, for, to be able to do our work and to supply the dispensaries and et cetera. So... So we make do, but uh, often it's like, Ey. and one time Jorge Mario, who you see here on the picture, he had to sit in the back of the pickup and it started to rain. It poured the whole time that we were driving. And, you know, there was a tarp because our our bags were there too, but um, he had major, major uh, pain after that, which luckily got help with Arnica, but still, you know. Other things could have happened. I wasn't in agreement with this, and I didn't allow anybody else to go in there. So, but um, this is what we needed to do. So, all this to say that we could use a little bit of help. <laughs> yeah, as you know, like, and I said this. I I did this presentation also this week at uh, we had our annual general meeting at the HTSF, and I said I can't do any presentation anymore without sort of saying what our needs are and encouraging you with your generosity and to help us out, you know. And, um, and so I think you all know, but I just want to tell you again, and I know last year your help was fantastic and we actually reached our goal and, you know, and it's wonderful because that way we're able to do the work that we're doing there. It all goes directly to the missions. And, um, uh, and so it goes to good use. So we've got, you know, our Just Giving page. Um, we got through the MISH website, um, you can give on the Terre Sans Frontières website as well, and where you also can become a member if you want to do that, like to show your relationship with HTSF and your desire to be involved. So it's a bit, more, there's a few more steps involved, but uh, um, anyways, as you, as this is the time of giving as well, the time of the year where we often you know, get material things that just fill up space, maybe an immaterial gift like this that is like a homeopathic because it's gonna work in the similar way <laughs> over there. <laughs> um, and I always like to think of it too that, you know, I um, can give on behalf of somebody and, you know, that's like a gift that gives twice, you know. So anyways. Thank you. <laughs> and they are, yes, absolutely, of course, yeah. I don't remember to say those things, but yes, it's a gift that gives back to you too because you can put them in your income tax. And on the Just Giving site, you get your tax receipt right away. And if you do it before the 31st of December, you can submit them right away in February when you do your income tax. <laughs> I know, I know. So there you go, we can get right into it right away. <laughs> okay, everyone. Well, thank you for a lovely morning. And uh, so don't forget, we're going to go get our pictures taken right away. And then we'll go to the, ca the cafeteria afterwards. We, so those of you who have seen it, we're, the, we're eating on the second floor. So it's the balcony of the cafeteria that's accessible by the stairs on the second floor. Okay. But for now, we're just going to come out here, take, take a couple of pictures, and then, and then go from there.